Hi, welcome to Crafty Little Things, I'm Andrea. You might have seen yesterday's project, if you didn't I'll link it below, um, where I made a card that looked like a baby a baby carriage or cradle, it could be if you took the wheels off. Um, um, and today I'm making a different version of that, I'm making it a little bit smaller and I'm going to make it into the closure of a gift bag. Now what I'm using is um, I'm using powder pink ink and what I've done is I've stamped using the powder pink ink onto Whisper White and I've used a retired stamp set which I've covered up <laughs> which is called Bundle of Love. I don't know when it retired. Um, a while ago I would have thought. It's called Bundle of Love, but you can use any. I've just used this little booties stamp because that's what's going in the bag. A pair of crocheted booties. So I've just stamped that little booty stamp all over. Not booty stamp, booties stamp. You see? Stamp that all over in powder pink. And then what I've got is I've got two pieces of powder pink that I've used the largest stitched shape circle for. And I've got two pieces of powder pink DSP, which again I've used the largest stitch shaped um, circle for. In actual fact, you only need one. I made a bit of a mistake there. You only need one of these. And then I've done four using the smallest stitch shaped circle out of powder pink, and then four little half inch circles out of the DSP using my half inch punch <clears throat> okay and that's all you need apart from some ribbon and again like yesterday I'm going to use this lovely polka dot tool for my project okay so I just randomly stamped the piece of paper and I'm going to make the box first of the bag it's, it's a box it's a kind of a boxy bag <laughs> um, and it's quite a big one it's six inches high when it's finished by four inches wide by an inch and a half deep and that allows me to wrap some tissue around a couple of a, a pair of booties and just slot them in so this is eleven and a half inches by seven and a half inches and I will give you centimeters for that just a minute I've been crafting crazy these past few days and my desk is absolutely covered in stuff. So what did I say? Seven and a half by eleven and a half. So that's 19 centimetres by 29.2 centimetres. Okay. And then we're going to score this. I haven't written down my score line, so just have to make this up as I go along. I'm going to score it on the short side at an inch and a half and on the long side an inch and a half, five and a half inches, seven inches and eleven inches. So that's on the short side you're scoring at an inch and a half which is 3.8 centimetres and on the long side, just go an inch and a half, which is 3.8, at five and a half, which is 14 centimetres, at seven, which is 17.8 centimetres, and at 11, which is 28 centimetres. Right, now for the scissors, um, for the heat cutting, we're cutting away this small skinny rectangle here, and then I'm going to notch in on that flap at the end this half inch flap is just standard sort of half inch to fasten it together and then I'm going to cut up the remaining score lines up to the first horizontal you've only got one horizontal on this anyway so you can't go wrong and then I'm going to notch those in quite a big bag this like I said I should really be using my big scissors because little scissors don't tend to be able to do it in one 
cups when these have these been okay and just make sure that you definitely have got rid of that what I call scar tissue where your scoring is because if you haven't then it's not going to fold together right Okay, that's a little bit of messy. It's because my scissors, um, I'm not using my normal scissors. Right, now I'm going to burnish these score lines. I've got that horrible feeling, you know that horrible feeling you get when you think you're not, your camera's not on? It was on. It was on. Usually I get that feeling when I finished the project. <laughs> okay. Got a little bit of paper there that doesn't need to be there. Okay, so then all we're going to do here is we're just going to... Didn't manage that line. On the right side then, you can use Tombow, you can use Fuse, you can use anything you want, you can use Snail, anything you like. Just run it down or glue it. Doesn't seem to want to do it that bit. And then just fasten that together. And then your bottom, decide which is your front. So usually your join will be at the back. So that'll be your front. So this is your last flap to go down, is your front flap. So I'm going to just run some glue. Just run some glue along there. And... I'm going to go in with my bone folder, just press the two tabs down onto it, and then I'm just going to run some. I'm actually going to run it this way. I just got to grips with using um, fast fuse and they retired it. I think so many people have problems with it. That it just became a pain. They kind of sold, stamping up, sold loads of it off, and they, they did a massive um, promotion on it that made it really, really affordable and then um, retired it. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to pinch in these sides. Now, because I made a little bit of a mistake with my score in there, it wants to pinch it in the wrong place. So I'm just going to pinch it in. You might want to just push it a little bit further down as well. Okay. Right, so in a minute, we're gonna when I've done the top out, I'm gonna punch through there because this is all gonna tie with a ribbon. Okay, so we'll pop that to one side, that's our bag. And that's going to be popped to one side now. That actually doesn't look too bad, that. Just want to make sure that it's... My little pair of baby shoes are going to fit lovely in there. And it just allows for some, you know, I can put them in like that. Wrapped in some cellophane, wrapped in some tissue. Right then, for the actual uh, pram itself then, or carriage, whatever we're going to call it, we need to find our centre point. And as I said before, with this, we know that our circle is almost three inches wide. So we know we need to go an inch and a half and an inch and a half. And that's our centre point there. And then we can do the same here. So we know that's our centre point. And that's our centre point. Or we could just count the squares. 
Once we've found our centre point, you might want to do this on the back rather than on the front like I am. Just line your ruler up with your um, line your ruler up with your the, the line that's going vertically and just you have to do it right the way through and then do it the other way. There we go. Right, you only need to do that once, even though you have to cut a few times because you can use the piece you cut out as a template and then just cut that piece away. Okay. And you're not going to see any residual um, pencil lines. And now fold this over in half. Don't crease until you've got your edges all lined up. And then just press it down and then go in with your bone folder and press it down really tight. Okay. And now for your shade, um, we just need to cut the shade in a half. So if you just take your half that you've folded, you can measure it if you want or just take the half that you've folded and just cut up that. And this is where I say I only need one piece because this is going to be folded for each side. That is a spare piece. And so, in fact, what we could do with this, if you wanted to, you could use it as a tag or something on your box. It's up to you. Or you could just leave it aside. So what we're going to do with this, I'm going to use the stripe side. Is We're just going to fold it in little tiny folds. Now, if you wanted to, you could score it, um, but I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to fold mine, starting up. I'm going to use the stripe side, so I'm going to fold from my centre point. So just, just mark your centre point with a pencil. Your centre point's there. And from there, I'm just going to fold back. Just a half an inch, quarter of an inch, and I'm just going to concertina it from that centre point backwards and forwards. And it doesn't even matter if they're not even because the the pram lid, if you like, the pram bonnet hood. I'll get the right word in a minute. The pram hood um, doesn't have to be perfectly uniform it's not a fan and you'll find that it starts to get sort of shorter at the end anyway okay now you can press it down with a bone folder but you don't want you want it to sort of open up so it's not doesn't have to be too sharp and then what you do is you'd glue that bit never turned it just tore slightly I'm just going to trim that off and what you're going to do is you're going to glue that to there and then you glue that piece around so I'm yeah, just going to there. pop some glue and you can put your ribbon on first if you like or you can put your ribbon on at the end because your ribbon can cover up any glue marks or any overlap that you might have. So I've ended up going with the spotty side. Just hold it down like you would anything else for five seconds. And then run some glue just up the very edge of there and just wrap that around and let that stick okay that gives you a little shade and then you want to stick it to this 
which is going to be the um, piece that wraps over your box or bag. So we're going to pop that on. Make sure it lines up nicely. Give that a press. And then on the other side, to hide this now, we'll just pop. Oh, do you know what I've done? I've gone and I'll use this piece because I've done the shade in spots, not stripes. I'm not apologising for my mistakes because... Um, we all make mistakes and this is something I'm kind of new to. So that's the back of the tag. Okay. So you can see now how it's going to fit over your bag. It's going to fit like so. And it's going to be, it's going to have two holes in the back and two holes in the front that are going to fasten it together. Um, the bag together but we're not going to do those just yet because we're going to do the wheels so we'll pop the wheels on before we pop them on we just need to put these little centers in I'm just going to use the little spotty center she says I'm going to use the spotty centers and then sticks a stripe on just get those into the centers of the wheels these are just for decoration, nothing else. Now, this is very small and there's not going to be much space for like um, a sentiment, but the whole um, point of it is that this is the tag. So you can stamp your sentiment on the inside of the tag if you want to. Or you can add a separate, you could add something across, which is probably what I'm going to do. So now to add your wheels, you want to keep them nice and low so that you can fit your ribbon on. So just run a little bit of glue, sort of across one like one arc of your circle and then hold it on for five just put it across one arc of your circle so you're not getting it all over and then just make sure that that piece actually goes on to the pram. Make sure your wheels are even. You can do different size wheels if you want. Prams used to have big, big wheels and little wheels, didn't they, back in the day? I had a brake underneath. I can remember pushing my sister's son across a really busy road, and the brake suddenly sprang on to his pram, and we just jarred in the middle of the street. Dogs are fast asleep. I brought them my new bed in here and they're absolutely fast asleep on it. I've been scavenging all morning for food but I seem to have given up now. Okay, so that's standing. That's holding its its own as a little pram. And then we take the tool and what we're going to do is we're just going to put it around both sides. Now you can either wrap it around or you can just stick it on both. 
both sides. I'm just going to go for sticking it on both sides. So I'm just going to cut a piece like so. I've cut a piece just in case you want to know. I'm cutting it three and a half inches. And another piece for the back. Half inches, and I'm going to cut a little piece to go along there as well. So I am going to use tape for the ribbon. Just because I think it will hold better. And you're less likely to be able to see the tape through it. And you are other glues. I'll pop that on. I'll trim it in a minute. It's a little bit harder to do this side. I might have to use glue for this side because. I don't want to press hard and you have to press hard with shoes. Things with the tape, it can be difficult to get it right to the edge. And now you might want to use fabric scissors to trim it. I'm just going to use my normal scissors, but and just trim it around there. Sort of trimmed it onto a sort of halfway through a polka dot, <laughs> so it looks a bit untidy there. And then I'm just going to stick a little piece. I was going to stick, now I'm not going to stick. I was going to put a little piece on there, but I'm not going to bother. And that's it, that's your little. Now, wouldn't that be fantastic for a little name tag? At a baby shower or something it's just absolutely divine if I was going to use it for that purpose I'd probably put something on the back but you could put a name across here you could just put the name inside so this is going to go onto the box onto the bag then onto the gift bag and it's going to close like so and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to punch holes through here and I'm just going to use some white satin ribbon just to tie it off okay so you could have um, a sentiment or something here and because I've got this piece I think I'd be inclined to pop one on so I think we will do that in a minute so I'm just going to get my cropper dial but you can get a single hole punch or you can use on the new version of this this has got a slot which I could use but on the new version of this it's got a, a hole so you could use that as well um, but I think for me, I'm going to use my cropper dial because I've got because it'll go straight through all the layers and just make life easier for me. I might even be able to get into there. I don't know. I'll have to have a look. Right, let me just get my cropper dial. I'll be right back. It's got so dark outside. Whoa! Look at the lighting. It is so dark. There's. Just over there, through my window, there's a big window here. Oh, through the window there, there's bright blue sky and fluffy white clouds. And coming over our heads, there's absolute pitch black 
storm cloud. It is frighteningly dark. It is scary. That is weird. So it's getting very dark in here now. I don't know if you can tell. Um, and that window there is about 10 feet by 8 feet. So that's a massive window. Look how dark it is. Right, so I'm going to make, I'm going to use my Crocodile Big Bite and I'm going to use the one at uh, the 3 sixteenths hole. And like I said, the good thing about this is I can just pass everything through in one go. And I think my box is four. So if I go to my 3 sixteenths hole, if I go to one and a half. on each side that should be fine and I'm just going to punch through just below the lace okay and then I'll go through on the other side so it's one and a half inches in and I'm just punching below the lace and you do exactly the same if you were using a regular handheld punch just exactly the same it's no, there's no difference. So you'd go an inch and a half in and just below the lace. Okay, let's just move some stuff out of the way. And I just need to find myself a piece of white, just white satin ribbon. What should I use? A silver ribbon. I'm just going to use powder. No, I'm not going to use powder pink ribbon. I'm going to use a white satin. I think. I don't think that silver ribbon is big enough for a start to go through there. I've shown you this before. I have now. This is my just scrap bag of ribbon. This is where I put all my little off cuts. I don't think that'll go. I don't think I'll be able to sew it together. I have got more of this, but I like to use my off cuts as much as possible. Mm, I don't know, it will go through. So obviously you'd pop your gift in first. So I can use that ribbon and snip it off. Now that piece is too small to use for anything, so this piece can go back in my bag. What's that doing on here? The table's getting infiltrated by things. Do you find that happens to you? I, I find it happens to me a lot that my, suddenly my craft table is just full of stuff. So obviously in the beginning then, I gave you some wrong info because we had too many of those. So what I'm going to do, oh look how cute, can you see? Um, so what I'm going to do to make up for it is I'm going to use this and I think I might use it on the striped. No, I'm going to use it on the spotty side. I'm going to carry on with those polka dots. I'm going to use it on the spotty side even though my stitching is sort of on the other side. And then I'm going to just pop a straight piece across because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, um, I don't know, I might use wishing you happiness on your special day actually, or congratulations on your new arrival. I'm thinking of just doing congratulations on your new arrival and sticking it across just in like a, I love this Better Together set. You know, I'm just so glad it didn't retire because, well, I would have counted on using it anyway, as you know. But um, it's nice to be able to use it and show it off to more people because it's just such a lovely stamp set. It really is. And now I just need a scrap of white to stamp onto. Just happened to have this from the other day. So I'm going to stamp on... This is something that I made a mistake with or I cut out. It's been scored, look. 
but I kept it as a scrap and I've used it to punch out my little circles yesterday and today I'm going to use it for the sentiment actually a little bit <laughs> I'm not looking at what I'm doing. That's better. I needed it. I just needed it to be lower down because I want to cut around it. So that's I just used the powder pink for that. I was stamping in powder pink um yesterday and it wasn't coming up as nice as it is now. I think what happened was I contaminated my stamp with another colour. Um, and now it's clean, it's um, I'm working properly. Right, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to cut that out. Do I need scissors or can I do it in my trimmer? I mean, do I need trimmer or can I do it in my scissors? I'm not very good at cutting straight. I think I've told you that before. What if I just hem that off with my um, triple, whatever you call it, punch. Ooh, that came close. <laughs> how do you know how close you are with it? Oh, yeah. Let me just never thought to do that before to check that should be fine do I get this central oh gosh I was really lucky there look at that so close so I'm just going to stick that on there and pop it across there I think this just shows why it's just handy to have and I'm still not going to throw this away I can use the other side uh, I think this just shows why it's handy to just have your stuff, have stash around you because ideas come to you when you least expect them. So I'm just going to pop three dimensionals onto there. And you could add a piece of the ribbon if you wanted just to I don't know somewhere just just to add to the gorgeousness of the whole thing but I'm going to just stick this on my dimensionals I wasn't going to stick it on my dimensionals but I am now because I think it's going to look gorgeous I kind of always work on the premise when I'm making things that I sometimes love the packaging more than the gift. And when I get something, I always go gaga over packaging. Go. And that's just a lovely way to use that. And like I say, it's a lovely way to just... That could be used for all sorts of little bits and bobs. And you could also just wrap if you had if you wanted a thinner layer of ribbon you could just wrap it over the top so you don't get the raw edges but the raw edges don't really matter it's just so cute so i hope you enjoyed making that and i'll join you again tomorrow for another fabulous project bye bye